Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first. No matter what you're going through in, in this life, place a cross on. It's a, it's a good thing to just know that God is with you and that you are seeking him. He says it's a reward of those that diligently seek him. Soak that in. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for watching over us through the weekend, Lord Jesus. I ask you to use me as you seem fit. Continue to keep over, watch over me, my wife, our family, our kids, all those we come in contact with throughout the day, Lord Jesus. I ask you to continue to use us as you seem fit to bring forth your word and all honesty and all truth. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort us to allow me to bring forth this word exactly how you want me to bring it forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I'm going to read from John chapter 3 and chapter 6. Chapter 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So here's a person, Nicodemus, he believed, but he had to sneak out. He didn't want the other Pharisees to know that he was seeking after Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is very important. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You got two types of baptism as a Christian. You got the water baptism and you got the baptism by the Holy Spirit. That, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and where it goeth. So if everyone that is born of the spirit, the spirit leads you. Everyone that's born of the spirit, the spirit leads you. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, art thou a master of Israel? And know us not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. People in the Spirit, they speak on things that they believe and know. They trust in the Word of God. They trust in Jesus. You understand? They know it. It's like they speak with an authority, like, I know God is real. I know Jesus is the Son of God. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now, keep that in mind right there. And no man hath ascended to, up to heaven, but he that come up down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever believeth in him. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the whole only begotten Son of God. Just remember this, what follows those who believe? Water baptism and baptism in the Spirit. Those two things follow those that believe. Just keep that in mind. You understand? And this is the condemnation, that light, he said, but he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, and light that cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they may are wrought in God. When you start believing in God and you start trusting in God, you want people to see the light in you. A lot of people remain in the dark because a lot of things that they do, they don't want to be cleansed. You understand? It's not that we shouldn't be mad at them because we were the same way at one point in time. You understand? But just keep that in mind. That's why a lot of people don't come to the light fully. You understand? Fully to the acknowledgement and the understanding of God. Let's go over to chapter 6. Chapter 
chapter 6, verse 26. Now, this is right after the multitude came, and he fed them with the fish. You understand? And Jesus said to them, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat with perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. God is talking, Jesus is talking spiritual things right now. They can't understand it. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gave you the true bread from heaven, which is who? Jesus. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have an everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, but just remember what the word said when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Man should not leave, live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Uh, you got to think about what is he saying. Bread in the spiritual sense is the word of God. And that means believing in Jesus and believing in his words. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he said, if I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that have heard and have learned of the father come up to me. What did he say? Every man therefore that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man have seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give it is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eat of my flesh and drink of my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from, from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead, but he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogues, as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard, had heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What shall if... If you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. He's speaking in the spirit, spiritual things. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man could come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From the time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You understand? Okay. 
Hope y'all had a blessed weekend. But he's telling you some things. Why did a lot of people stop following Jesus? And why did a lot of people stop following Jesus still to this day? Because they don't understand spiritual things. I didn't hear TV shows or uh, people. They say, eat my flesh, eat my blood. That's sickening. Well, they don't understand the spiritual things. You understand? Everything is spiritual and physical in the same sense. You understand? The wine and the bread is the significance of Jesus, the word of life. You got to think about what Jesus is saying about eating my flesh. You understand? Eat my words up. You understand? Eat my ways up. If you believe in me, do what I do. You understand? Spiritual. It's spiritual. The bread of life, the word of God is life. You understand? You got to really realize this. You can read the Bible so many times when he talks about armor, the armor of God. He's talking about a physical armor, but then he's talking about it in a spiritual sense. You understand? A lot of things that the, what the Bible talks about is on a spiritual and a physical plane. You got to understand both. Like I was telling my wife this morning, the Old Testament gave you a bunch of laws and commandments in regards to the flesh. It wasn't really too much spiritual. It just, hey, thou should not commit adultery. The, the best spiritual part of it was put in place God. God, that's the spiritual part in the Old Testament. Anything is, all of it is about God, but you know, you got to worship God in spirit and truth. That's why he said no other gods before me. But the rest of my life, fleshy laws and things like that. You understand? Jesus combined the two. He's combined the spirit with the flesh. You understand? He said, if you can't understand heaven, earthly things, how can you understand the heavenly things? So you got to also understand, so you got to understand the Old Testament too. And you got to understand the New Testament. You got to understand both. You got to combine the two. You got to understand the heavenly things and the spiritual things. And Jesus mean both when he say both. Those who come to me would never thirst. You understand? Would never be hungry. You understand? And that means both. You understand? The more you eat the word up, you're never going to thirst. You're never, never going to be hungry. He's going to take care of you in the physical too. He tells, tells you that. Consider the birds. You understand? The more you eat the words, you eat two things. He said, man should not live by bread alone. You understand? So you need both. You need the spiritual access to God. And God has gave his spirit to people. But people are so hard-headed and stiff-necked that they don't want to understand the truth. Why? It's a lot of reasons. The world. And some people ain't been baptized in the water or in the spirit. And the thing is, if you're not baptized in the spirit, how can you be led by it? You understand? A lot of people are led by the flesh. You understand? A lot of people are led by the flesh. It is what it is. Whether you want to believe it or not. A lot of people are not spirit led. They're led by what their flesh wants. What their flesh desires. He said, a lot of people don't go to the, come to the Father lest they deeds be exposed. You understand that? Evil deeds. God wants you to come to him so he can cleanse you of your evil ways. You understand? But a lot of people don't want to come. Well, once I get myself right, I'm going to come to God. That's like saying, hey, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing for now. I'm going to keep these evil ways, you know what I'm saying, for now. And when I'm ready, I'm going to come to God. But the thing is, he's trying to tell you to come to him now. You understand? So he can fix you. You understand? So you can be baptized in the spirit and baptized with the water. You understand? Does it make sense? It's spiritual and physical. The word of God means so many different things when you read it. If you read the Bible, you'll see how many people were led in the spirit in the Bible to do certain things. You understand? That's why the God said who he called, he first he foreknew. Who his father gave him, he already knew who he was. Like I, I always talk about Samson's story. Before Samson was even born, his mother, he told, the angel of the Lord came to Samson's mother, right? And told them that this man is going to be uh, set up to deliver the Israel, people of Israel from the hand of the Philistines. So they knew this, but they forgot. That's why when he was, not necessarily they forgot, they was trying to understand on their own ways how God was going to do this. But if you look at it, uh, Samson was spirit led so many times, often, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him. You understand? But a lot of people wouldn't understand that. 
You understand? And if you read Samson's, yes, he made some mistakes. He did some things that wasn't pleasing to the Lord. But he did a lot of things that were pleasing to the Lord too. I always tell people he reigned for 20 years. If you read Judges, some, some judges didn't even reign five years, six years, seven years. Samson reigned 20 years, do you understand, for the Lord. You understand? But he had to do his purpose. He had to do what God called him to do because why? He was led by the Spirit. He had to do whatever God wanted him to do because he's led by the Spirit. Even the prophets led by the Spirit. Abraham led by the Spirit. Why? They sought God too. Even Samson sought God. Abraham sought God. David sought God. You understand? Mordecai sought, sought God and Esther. You understand? You know? And he was led too. All of them was led by the Spirit. You understand? You see, the Bible could be a, can be a little confusing. But if you read the Bible, you'll see so many people were led by the Spirit. The chosen ones. But now everybody got that. Everybody can be led by the Spirit if they choose to be. If you choose to accept Jesus Christ in your life. You understand? Gentile, Jew, Greek, anybody can be led by the Spirit. They just have to let Jesus Christ in. Let God in. Be baptized and be born again. Be reborn. You understand? Why? Because you have to be in order to be led in the Spirit. You understand? It's not hard. It's just we as human beings, we don't like to change certain things about ourselves. You understand? You know, I'm hard-headed too. I can't lie to you. It's a lot of things we don't want to change. But we come to God, come to Jesus, so he can change them anyway. Does it make sense? You understand? You got somebody who's going who's gonna to help you regardless. Going to chastise you regardless, especially when you come to him. You understand? A lot of times we keep doing the same things over and over again because we're not letting the Spirit use us. It's a lot of things that can stop you from being led in the Spirit properly. Fornication, lying, stealing, all these things. You understand? That the devil, like my pastor talked about this Sunday, you understand? About the devil came to lie, kill, I mean steal and destroy. You understand? You got to think about what he wants to do. He wants to disrupt what God has for you, which is life everlasting. So he'll do anything. That's why sin came into the world. That's why he wanted sin into the world. You understand? So he can disrupt God's plans for our life. He said men love the evil in the world more than they love the light. I mean the darkness in the world more than they love the light. You understand? But you can come to the light and be cleansed from the darkness that dwells inside you. You understand? One thing about us, all of us have good and evil inside of us. It's a fact. We know good and evil. You understand? After the Adam and Eve ate from that tree, you understand? It it opened so a doorway. You understand? It opened a doorway. You know, and the answer to that, the how to fix that door is Jesus. I was watching a movie called Wilder People. And I, this is it's, it wasn't funny, it's just the way he talked, but uh this would happen. He says he said a saying, he said, You're like when you follow Jesus, you're like a you're a sheep in a maze full of wolves. And I love that saying. You're a sheep in a maze full of wolves. But the thing is, even the wolves can turn to sheep. That's how amazing God is. That's how compassionate God is. God wants every soul, you understand, to come to the light. But he know everybody's not. But he want everybody to. You understand? Everybody has this hope if they believe in Jesus Christ. Everybody can come to him. But if you believe not, you are already condemned. If you believe not, you are already condemned. And he said, these things will follow those that believe. There's a lot of things that happens after you, after you are converted into a believer, after you are born again. Things change in your life. You look at things from a whole different perspective than how you used to look at things. You see spiritual things that other people don't see. You understand why? Because they don't want to see them. Let me pause for a second and I'll continue.